And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to The Longest Journey. Now, if you last remember, April Ryan had just found herself transported to a parallel world. The world that she does not yet know is called Arcadia. Now, she has a lot of questions, and I'm sure you do too, so she needs to go in, talk to Vestrum Tobias, and find out what's going on. So let's continue The Longest Journey. All right, we're still out here in the... What's this guy doing right there? Huh. Oh, well, let's go inside. Now, here's the thing. Vestrum Tobias here is about to go into a good 15 minutes of exposition telling us what's going on. Now, I'm going to try to summarize that in two or three. So, we're going to start our conversation with Vestrum Tobias, and then I'm going to leave and we'll come back later after all this is done. So I'll see you in about 15 minutes. Okay, we're back. I just literally skipped over 15 minutes of gameplay. Uh, Vestron Tobias led us into the next room and showed us a bunch of murals and explained to us what was going on, which I'm going to try to summarize in much less than 15 minutes. Basically, he told us the story of the balance. As you've heard several times, we are currently in the world of Arcadia. The world that April came from, the world in which you and I live, is known as Stark. About 12,000 years ago, there was only one world, Earth. But in Earth, people had the ability to um, use both magic and science. And this made them very powerful. As they said, humanity was able to create life and to make the stars dance. However, this using such power and ability led the way to allow chaos to enter. And chaos could destroy the entire world. So obviously this was a bad thing. And they tried to figure out what to do about it. And while they're working on this, they are visited by a group of four people from another planet known as the Dryak Kin. Uh, we call them dragons. And the Dryak Kin had seen this happen before and they knew a way to solve it. So the Dryak Kin got together with a group called the Sentinels. The Sentinels were made up of six scientists and six magicians. And with the aid of the Dryak Kin, they decided the only way to save the world would be to split it in two. Basically, they would create two worlds. Stark, which would be devoted to science and logic and order, and Arcadia, which would be the home of magic and chaos. And it would take, you know, basically all of these people's abilities and the Dryak Kin in order to do this. So what they did was they created a realm outside of the universe, an area known as the Realm of the Guardian. And the Dryak Kin and the six scientists, the six magicians, and a woman who had become the first guardian all traveled to this realm. And the Dryak Kin produced a disc, and from this disc they created a tower. And the, this tower became the home of the guardian. And the woman who was the guardian, her dreams, her imagination, her soul, if you want to call it that, would be kept within the disc for a thousand years and in the meantime she would stay in the tower and she would channel order and chaos between Stark and Arcadia and thus maintain the balance and so both worlds would be saved. Well, the Dryakin then tells them that there is another disc and he produces it. And the Dryak Kin tells them that someday, if they ever wanted to reunify the two worlds, and that someday they would have to reunify the two worlds for some reason, then they would need this disc. Now, he divided the disc into four pieces and gave each of the pieces to the Sentinels from Arcadia. But the Dryak Kin then told them that this was not enough. They would also have to have four gems to attach to the disc. And each of these gems would be given to one of the Dryak kin. 
and two of the Dryad kin would live in Arcadia, and two would live in Stark. And that, you know, so if, again, if they ever needed to reunify the two realms, they would have to get the disc and then get the four gems. And I'm sure all of you who have played enough adventure games by now know that, aha, I know what we're doing. We're collecting disc and gems, aren't we? Well, yeah, welcome to the rest of the game. Anyway, things went along well for a while, and then the Sentinels who lived in Stark decided they wanted to reunify the two worlds. They missed the days when mankind was all-powerful and could create life and make the stars dance. Now, this was made a little more difficult by the fact that at this point everyone in Stark had forgotten Arcadia even existed. All the stories of magic and magical creatures were now just dismissed as myth and legend. The only contact between the two worlds is via dreams, because dreams do allow us to transfer from one world to the other. Well, the people in Stark wanted to reunify the two worlds. The Sentinels from Arcadia weren't so keen on this idea. So what happened was that the people, the Sentinels from Stark, started calling themselves the Vanguard and started working towards reunification. Now, it seems that a Sentinel, the Guardian, like the one that I mentioned earlier, can only serve as guardian for a thousand years because a human being cannot live separated from their soul for longer than that. So every thousand years a new guardian has been born. The balance sees to it that a new guardian is born and yeah it sounds a little bit like midi Chloridians and um, restoring balance to the force doesn't it? But it's actually better than that, trust me. Um, anyway the Vanguard started trying to track down these people as they were born so that they could have a guardian who was under their control. Now, about 200 years ago, or about now, the 12th guardian should have stepped down. It's been 12,000 years since the worlds have been separated. But the Vanguard keep grabbing the new guardians as they're born and trying to educate them in their way of doing things, and so the Guardian has not been replaced. In, so they've been there for 200 years too long. About two weeks ago, the Guardian woke up and left the tower. And no one knows where the Guardian is, or even how to get to the tower at this point. And so the balance is endangered. Science, or not science, logic and order and chaos are getting out of balance. And that's why we're seeing things like the strange creature who appeared in the um, Fringe Cafe with um, April here. And again, another side comment. Does anyone find it a little amusing that there is a Fringe Cafe where someone is traveling between two parallel worlds? I wonder if the people who did the TV show Fringe knew anything about this game. Not that they have anything to do with each other, but yeah, when April... Uh, April Ryan and Olivia Dunham, wouldn't they get along well together? I actually think they would. But anyway, to continue. April is a shifter. She is someone who is capable of moving from one world to the other at will. These are rare. She does not know how to use her power at this point. Um, Cortez seems to know something about it. Cortez, who is obviously a sentinel from Stark, was able to channel her power for her and bring her through or allow her to travel through to Arcadia but Cortez himself could not have gone with her. He would not survive the journey and best from Tobias here couldn't go back. So as someone who can shift between worlds obviously April has a key role to play in this battle between the Sentinels and the Vanguard and between Order and Chaos and all of this. That's why she is so important. Okay, that was a much shorter version of what you would have had to sit through 15 minutes of. Uh, we need to talk to Tobias some more, so let's see what else he has to say. Excuse me. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you do with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Yeah, you have to keep talking to him about this guy. Who'd know about West House? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. 
Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. Okay, the game has a bit of a cheat here, or I kind of thought this was a um, dirty trick gameplay. Um, you heard the little ping, that indicates we just got a key piece of information. The problem is, there is something we need to know about West House that they haven't told us yet. That's why you see the highlighted conversation option is still, who did you say I should see? You would think that, well, that's just what he just told me. Why should I ask again? Because he hasn't told you everything. Who did you say I should see about West House? The map merchant that the market may know. There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know West House by his real name. In the city, he is known as the Rolling Man because of his strange two-wheeled vehicle. A most dreadful and dangerous contraption if I ever saw one. A bicycle? Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the West House himself. Okay. Now we got another ping. Yeah, that's kind of a trick, I thought. I'll see you later. You will? If you say so, then it must be true. Because, you know, you think you've gotten everything you need out of that conversation, and it's just left a conversation option up there to repeat itself. And, nope, you have to go ask the same question again to get the other piece of information. I kind of bothered with it. All right. Huh. Didn't I see one of those? Man, there's a city in Morrowind that has that exact same fountain there. Kind of like the two kids practicing sword fighting here. But, okay, let's go down into the stalls. See if we can find this map merchant. Alright, there's stuff we can do here. Like, we can look at this dancer up here. In a world without the screen, that's what passes for entertainment. And it's pretty darn good. Yeah, I guess as a dancer, Charlie would do good here, too. Um, hmm. This guy looks like he's selling maps. I wonder if he's the map merchant. Let's talk to him. Maps! I got maps! Can I interest you in a map, miss? Top-notch, hand-drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Yeah, if you had not gone and talked to Tobias that extra time, that's the only option you would have got. But now we can ask about the Rolling Man. Can you tell me where the Rolling Man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because I need to find him. Sorry, guild rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps! Yeah, the problem is, here again, you have to keep talking about this one topic until the guy finally, or the game finally decides to advance the plot. I really need to know where the Rolling Man lives. Sorry, can't do. Please? Pretty please? No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. And again. Please tell me where the Rolling Man lives. No, oh, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. And, okay, plot is advancing. You're late again! And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Dolmari to do a human job. What are you gonna do now without a delivery boy? Hire a new one, of course. Uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants. Damnation! Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable. And I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy could work. 
If the Guild of Merchants don't find out. I won't tell them if you don't. Mind the pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's for the Captain of the White Dragon. Nebebe, I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. Well, I guess we have a job. Oh, and remember to have the customer sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. Bye now. Maps! Fresh, detailed, life-saving maps! Okay. Something I found interesting here is that usually in games where you have the two worlds, or neat fiction, really, where you have the two different worlds, you have a magical world and the science world, the science world is always portrayed as the evil, backwards place you don't want to be, whereas the fantasy world is always the open, tolerant place that, you know, the utopian one. Well, notice that in this five-minute conversation, we found out that Arcadia, they're pretty uh, racist. Apparently, they don't like Del Mari, and they're kind of sexist. They don't want to think about, um, you know, female delivery boys. Whereas, back in Stark, no one seemed to care what race or gender anyone was. In fact, I'll point out that Fiona and Mickey are one of the, I think, they're one of the first openly gay couples in gaming. I mean, and this is completely unremarked upon by anyone in the game. So, um, and that was 1999. Hmm. So, yeah, maybe Stark isn't so bad after all. Okay, we're outside the city here. The walls look ancient. Mercury must be at least as old as anything back in the real, uh, in my world. Well, they're both real worlds. Okay, the only thing we really need to pay attention to here is this stall. And there's a couple of merchants out here, but we can ignore the rest. This guy's selling musical instruments. Most of these I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there and what looks like half a guitar and a couple of dried rabbit carcasses. Ugh. Yeah, apparently they got one of the Marx brothers in there working the place. All right, um, we just need to know that was there. That's the only reason I looked at it. Um, there's other merchants here. Um, we don't really need to worry about them right now, because again, we don't want to spend all this time. All right, well, here we are in the harbor. It's a lighthouse, much like the ones we have at home, except this one, yeah. of course, burns a blue fire. Of course it does. The size of these galleons is truly breathtaking, and there are dozens of dozens of them, not to mention a number of smaller vessels. Mercuria must be a very important and very busy port. The aliens kind of look maybe Greek to me, but anyway, the ship we're wanting to go to is this one. So we need to head back there. And I'm making poor April run, so we won't have to sit here and watch her walk out this walkway all this time. And this is, of course, Captain Nebere, and yeah, go make a fool of yourself, April. Ahoy there, matey! Pardon? Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? No. W what do you say, then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today, then? If we're feeling adventurous, but never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. Yeah, and he does use matey, apparently. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the white dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the temple market. Aye. I be Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. Hand the map over, girl. With Jal's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Okay, um, 
been skipping over a lot of conversations. I'm not sure how the best way to skip over this one is, because we're going to have to talk to Captain Nebo Bay a while. It's not really something I can summarize, is the thing. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Okay, remember the merchant said we had to get um, the delivery list signed? Sign this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Please sign it or I won't get paid. I just gave you an errand. That should be enough to cover it, I. Forget the money. That's not why I need your signature. I need you to sign so that I can keep my job and hopefully find a way home. Sorry, but it brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Okay, I am going to skip over the rest of this. I'll give you a catch up in just a second. Okay, to summarize the conversation I just jumped over, the captain will not sign because the religion he is part of, he worships a god called the Mojal. The Mojal thinks that signing your name on a piece of paper is giving away a piece of your soul, so he can't do it. The fact that he doesn't know how to read or write has nothing to do with this, because yes, he doesn't know how to read or write. Um, however, April was able to get out of him that if music is playing nearby, the Mojal will be distracted and then he can sign because the Mojal won't see what he's doing. So she has agreed to play some music for him. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second. Um, fortunately, we know where there's a um, vendor selling musical instruments. And wait for her to run all the way. There is no instant teleport to the exit here. That bugs me. All right, here's where we need to go. Is this instrument merchant over here? Let's go talk to him. Run, April, run. Okay. What's your um most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. Yeah, apparently one of the Marx Brothers is working here. Okay, let's head in the Aaron we just got as a tip because. Yeah. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? And we have to wait for this entire scene to play out. There's no way to skip through it. As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Not very well, but I'm sure the, uh, Mojal won't mind. I guess that was agreement. Um, so you know how to play the flute and hadn't bothered to mention that before now? Any other talents you may know that might, might, might be useful to us to know, April? Okay. Wait for April to run out there. I bet Andrew Ryan never ran anywhere, but we're going to make April Ryan run everywhere. There's a lighthouse here, too. I wonder if Rapture is down under there. April should feel light at home. All right. Uh, don't bother talking to the captain. Let's just hand him the paperwork, and it does that. There are conversation options, but we need, don't need to worry about them right now. I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on, but don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojal will surely wreak vengeance on us both. Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. 
I can pretty much guarantee you that. I wouldn't guarantee that, April, but yeah, we'll be seeing Captain Nebevay again. Don't worry. Ships the White Dragon. Think that's related in any way to the White Dragon we saw way back in the prologue? Hmm. The one who said she was a who called April her child. Nah, I'm sure that has nothing to do with anything. Run, April, run! All right, let's go back to the merchant and tell him that we're done. Now you're about to see what it looks like when I jump through these, um, when I skip through these conversations, because the merchant is about to give us directions somewhere, and the problem is that it's apparently supposed to be a joke. He gives us these long, complicated set of directions, and he spends several minutes talking about it. Where are you going, April? And so, when we get to that, you'll see it. There's not even a break in the conversation there. I'm just going to skip through it, just warning you in advance what's about to start happening. I'm ready for my next job, sir. Yes, yes, good, good. Uh, did you get the captain's signature? Yes. Hand me the delivery list so that I can see for myself. You know, you remind me of somebody I know. A real Scrooge. Good. Uh, what's a Scrooge? Maps? New revisions? Lifesavers? Maps? All right. Fortunately, we had to get it signed, and we actually kept the flute, which is different for this game, so... Right. Your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um... No. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn. Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? I forget. Uh, let me explain, then. Now, pay attention, because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the Okay, this is what I'm going to skip Oak over. Until That's you get... when you see... Uh, That's west? Oak. No, left. That'll take Keep you walking. walking south or There's about... There's a river? No, just a bridge. The and river that's where West House... No, far from it. But eventually you need... you'll get you to a lot... You call murder civilized? Better than locking people yeah, up. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square North and... North again? Head... Uh, no, West. Is it a, a big par... tower? No, only about five feet tall. Big but creature, it's... four legs, large yes, ears... the horror of the Good South... Grief. Okay, Pass then... by the tower to the edge of the I cliff... I hope I got all that. Basically, go West until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. Yeah, that would have taken several minutes if I had let them go through all the dialogue options, and it's basically a joke. Alright, I'll also point out that um, we supposedly got paid an errand for making the delivery. We didn't. Alright. Let's go talk to the rolling man, Brian Westhouse. And we didn't need the directions because we just have to click here. Great view. Back home, a place like this would easily set you back tens of millions. Here, it's probably free. And I am just disturbed by this rock hanging right here like it's about to fall at any moment. Last time I saw that was in Minecraft. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, well, <clears throat> guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya for him. Sorry, I don't no, know. No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... You hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. 
Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. All right, this is another long conversation that we're going to skip past for a while, so um, I'll be back in a minute. All right, if you talk to um, the rolling man, Westhouse here, uh, he will basically tell you that he met Cortez, who he knows as Manny Chavez, in 1934. Yes, that is close to 300 years ago. From the people, these people's time. Uh, basically, he met Chavez in India, and he was into big into mysticism and magic and that sort of stuff. And Chavez told him he could show him a world of magic. And they wound up in Tibet in 1934. From there, he almost died in the snow. He wound up in a um, monastery, and somehow he managed to transfer himself here to. Arcadia. Now, he's only been here about 20 years from his time. Uh, he spent most of that 300 years in the dream world between the two worlds. But he has no idea how to get back to Stark and isn't sure why um, Cortez told um, April to come see him. Well, we need to make sure we get our delivery list signed because, you know, otherwise the merchant will get sick. So let's take care of that. Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. And then we can leave. Hold on one second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. Or can we? It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but... Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. Thanks. All right. So we now have a pocket watch. Now if we, whoops. If we look at the pocket watch. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. But hey, I bet we have something we can use in a tiny hole. What do you think? If I insert this pin carefully into the hole, like so, and then slowly wind it... It worked! It's ticking! I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! Bye. God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. Now you go ahead, Miss Ray, and go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. Cortez. Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. 
Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. Okay. This is another long conversation, so I'm going to skip through it and then summarize it when we're done. Alright. To give a quick overview of what I just skipped over, because it was another 10 minute conversation. Basically, she talked to Cortez a little bit like, who are you really? People there say you're 300 years old, and he basically says, I will tell you someday, but not now. You have to trust me for now. Um, they talk about what's been going on, and he says that they basically have a mission. This is what they have to do to save the world. They have to find the lost guardian, the one who left his the guardian's realm two months, two weeks ago. They have to find the gateway back to his realm. They have to find and assemble the disc that will let them get there, and they have to defeat the vanguard. Now, there's a set of problems with this. First of all, we don't know where the lost guardian is, but Cortez says that because of where it is, Newport attracts the powerful. So the Guardian would have been come here. Um, he doesn't know where the gateway is, but he thinks um, Tobias over in Arcadia does know. Um, they will have to get the disc. The disc is currently in Arcadia. Again, Tobias will know where this is. And... Then they will have to get the gems from the four dragons. And he says he will help her with that once she has the disc. As far as the vanguard, it turns out that the vanguard in Stark are not known as that. They are known as the Church of Voltec. Um, April is stunned when she hears this because she says that means they're big. The Church of Voltec, they have finances greater than some governments. They own armies. They own planets. They are an incredibly powerful New Age religion. And Cortez tells her that if they get to the tower, they will own everything. So this is our enemy. He then says that April is the only one who can help them because she is such a powerful shifter. Just her presence helps keep chaos at bay. The breach the other night at the Fringe Cafe would have been a lot worse if she had not been there, and that she will need to go to Arcadia, because since our chaos and magic are always linked, chaos is more powerful there, and the tidal wave that is the approaching chaos storm will hit there first. But she is not the chosen one. Prophecies don't work that way. She just does not automatically have to be the one to do this. She has to choose to do this herself. So, this is the place we're at right now, and I can say no, but the game won't proceed without it. So, this is the way we have to go. Then the choice will have to be, yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city. But where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right. Okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul, at the Hope Street Cathedral, 
He's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait. Did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. Oh, we left and we didn't pick up Constable Guybrush. We don't have him anymore. Oh well. Okay, we have a couple of things we have to do. We're going back to the French. And are these two guys in here fishing or something? Or what are they doing? Okay. Does that clock ever change time? I haven't been paying attention. I really don't know. I'll have to look at that. All right. Yep, like I said, the Fringe Cafe. The Fringe Cafe, my home away from home. I really don't mind working there. It's a nice place. I mean, it ranks nice on a scale from begging for food at the bottom to just scraping by at the top. I do not intend to make a career of it. Yeah. I would assume the Fringe Cafe was a joke about the um, TV show Fringe, like I was saying earlier, but this came first <laughs> by quite a few years, so... Alright. We need to go talk to Charlie. Pulling long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a... few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Weirder than what happened here last night? Much weirder, trust me. I mean, what happened here could be explained. A hologram, rapture gas, mass suggestion. That's stretching it a little, don't you think? What, rather than the alternatives? That we're all either going crazy or that something's breaking through from another world? You don't think that's stretching it? I don't know what I think, April. I just know that sometimes there are things lurking in the shadows that can't be explained by science. That the world holds more mysteries than we think. Maybe. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, all right? Maybe. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. She knows about the show, so she'll be here. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. Okay, everything for the rest of this chapter is going to be automatic after this. Uh, we're going to have one choice to make. It's about, do we go out with a date with Zack? Do you remember last time we promised Zack a date? But, yeah, April's a shifter. She can take care of herself, so I think we have to keep our promises. Yeah, it actually doesn't make any difference. But, um, anyway, um, we're going to go ahead now and finish this out. This is the end of chapter two. So, 
in the meantime, you have to talk to Charlie before this will automatically finish, by the way. But in the meantime, this is Dennis. I am Tan Staffel, the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time as we continue with The Longest Journey. We'll talk to Emma, and then I will see you then. So where have you been all day? You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again, and on top of that, Zack brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh, shit! Zack! I totally forgot. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I needed some information. And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I made a promise. To that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. A promise is a promise. I have to go. Commendable, but incredibly misguided. He's only after one thing, you know, and that's sex. <laughs> he can forget about that. I'll go, but I'm only staying an hour. I'll tell him I'm tired or sick. Knowing Zack, he'll take that as an invitation to your bed. But I guess you've made up your mind. Go, have a good time. Good luck, you'll need it.